Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shweta Yadav, Assistant Professor of Zoology, Dayal Singh College, Karnal. Today, I welcome you all to this lecture series for the undergraduate student of Zoology organized by the Department of Higher Education, Haryana. The topic of today's lecture is cell reproduction. This topic belongs to the syllabus of BSc Semester 1, Paper 2 of Zoology. This topic will be covered in two lectures where the first lecture will be discussing about cell cycle and mitosis while in the second lecture we will be discussing the phases of meiosis. I hope you find these lectures informative and interesting. After this lecture you will be able to explain the cell cycle and its different phases have a basic idea of cell cycle checkpoints, define mitosis, identify and explain the different phases of mitosis, understand the significance of mitosis. Now let us begin with some facts about the cell cycle. All those changes which occur during cell growth and cell division are collectively known as cell cycle. The first detailed explanation of the phenomena of cell cycle was given by English radiobiologist Alma Howard and English physicist Stephen Pelk in the year 1953. The duration of a cell cycle can vary from 15 minutes in a bacterial cell to several weeks in some embryonic cells. While the cell remains in interphase for about 90 to 96 percent of the total duration of the cell cycle which is the maximum for any phase. The regulation of the cell cycle involves the proteins, cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases and the discovery of these proteins got Hartwell, Hunt and Nurse the Nobel Prize in Physiology for 2000, year 2001. So let us now talk about the different phases of cell cycle. The cell cycle is divided into two main phases. These are interphase. The interphase is further divide the largest cell phase and it is also known as the cell growth phase. The second phase of the cell cycle is the mitotic phase or the cell division phase. This phase is of very short duration. The interphase is further divided into three subphases. These subphases are G1, synthetic phase S and G2 phase. Now let us take talk about these different phases of cell cycle in detail. The first phase of the cell cycle is the first growth phase. It is also known as the post mitotic or pre synthetic or gap 1 phase. In this stage, the pooling of amino acids, nucleic acid, nucleotides, and the synthesis of RNAs, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, enzymes, and energy molecules takes place. As the cell is stocking up macromolecules for all the synthesis it is going to do in the synthetic phase. The synthetic phase is also known as the invisible phase as there are no visible changes in the cytoplasm or the nucleus. Here the DNA replicates and the DNA content of the cell doubles up. This is followed by the synthesis of stones which further associate with the DNA molecules and form the new nucleosomes. Each chromosome now has two sister chromatids which are united at the centromere. The second growth phase or the G2 phase is also known as post synthetic or pre mitotic or the gap phase 2. It is the phase of major cytoplasmic changes as in this phase the synthesis of three types of RNAs R, M and T, the spindle proteins and ATP molecules takes place. 
the duplication of the organelles like mitochondria, plastid and centrioles to takes place here. Here apart from all these changes, the DNA synthesized during the S phase is checked for damages and repaired in this stage only. So, after a long interphase, the cell finally reaches the mitotic or M phase. This stage is also known as the division or D phase. Now, it is very short in comparison to the interphase. The cell growth stops. The sister chromatids are separated and divided into equally into two daughter cells. In the orderly distribution of cell organelles and biomolecules in the two daughter cells also occurs here. Finally, the cell is divided into two identical daughter cells which are similar to the parent in all respect. Now after all these stages, there is one more phase in the cell cycle which is known as the G0 or gap 0 phase or the resting phase. It is a phase where the cell has left the cycle and stopped dividing. This phase occurs when the differentiation of cells into specialized cells happens after the G1 phase and the example for this are the nerve cells. These cells do not divide any further as they are specialized for a particular job. So, until now we have seen the different phases of the cell cycle but have you ever wondered what makes the cell divide? What are the mechanisms that ensure the fidelity of the whole process? As even the smallest mistakes in this process can lead to serious consequences like cancer. Let us now have a look at how the cell cycle is regulated. The regulation of cell cycle takes place through the checkpoints and cyclins. So what are these checkpoints? These checkpoints are the control mechanisms which ensure proper progression of the cell cycles. These are the points in the cell cycle where the conditions of the cell are assessed and also if the cell is not ready for the next step, they also act as the potential termination point. The second important factor are the proteins cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases. These proteins are play a major role in control of the cell cycle at the various checkpoints. There are several checkpoints in the cell cycle and the three of the most important cell cycle checkpoints are number one the G1 checkpoint. It is to ensure that everything is ready for the DNA synthesis. Only then the G1 cyclins bind with the CDC2 kinases and help the cell to progress from G1 to S phase and thus from this, the cell moves from the G1 to S phase and the DNA replication begins. Now continuing with the regulation, the next checkpoint is the G2 checkpoint which ensures that all the micro, macromolecules, organelles, particularly the DNA is ready for the cell division. Only then the sufficient amount of mitotic cyclins bind with CDC2 kinases and let the cycle progress from G2 to the M phase. The third checkpoint is the metaphase checkpoint which ensures that the cell is ready to complete the cell division. Check, by checking the spindle formation, if the spindle formation is perfect then the anaphase promoting complex removes securin S and M cyclins from the cytoplasm and the cell proceeds from metaphase to anaphase. But in case the spindle formation is not perfect, the securin S and M cyclins are not removed and the cell cycle is arrested at metaphase only. So after this checkpoint is passed, the cell goes all the way to cytokinesis 
and formation of two daughter nuclei happens. So, this is all about the cell cycle and its phases and regulations. Now, moving uh, next, we shall be discussing the process of mitosis. First, let me ask answer some questions like what is mitosis, who discovered the phenomena and where does it occur. Mitosis as you may have studied in school is the division of mature cell, somatic cell into two identical daughter cells each with a nucleus having the same amount of DNA and the same number and kind of chromosomes as the parent cell. Thus, the daughter cells are qualitatively and quantitatively similar to the parent cell. So, while it was the German biologist Strasberger who discovered mitosis in plant cells in 1875, it was another German biologist Walter Fleming who not only described mitosis in animal cells in detail but also coined the term mitosis in the year 1879. Mitosis can last from anywhere from 30 minutes in bacterial cells to 3 hours in some early embryonic cells. Mitosis occurs in a vast variety of cells. The, it can occur in somatic cells during cell growth and germ cells during multiplicative phase of gametogenesis. Mitosis can occur in haploid and diploid cells both. It occurs in the meristematic cells of the plants root and shoot apices. It may in man particularly it occurs in skin, bone marrow and embryonic tissues. Onion root tips are the best material for studying mitosis as they help they have a clear visualization of the different stages. Now let us discuss the different phases of mitosis. Mitosis as such is divided into two phases. The first one being karyokinesis meaning the nuclear division and the second one being cytokinesis meaning the cytoplasmic division. The uh, karyokinesis is further divided into five substages which are prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Let us study these phases in some detail. Prophase is the first phase of mitosis right after the interphase. It begins with the formation of esters. The chromatin begins to condense and the chromos form chromosomes. These chromosomes start taking their final shape. The nucleolus and the nuclear envelope start to disintegrate and dissolve in the cytoplasm. The mitotic spindle formation begins between the esters and push these esters apart. The next phase is prometaphase. This phase is also known as late prophase. Here, the nuclear envelope disintegrates completely. The nucleolus disappears completely. As there are no nuclear envelope, the microtubules invade the nuclear space and bind to the kinetochores of the sister chromatids. The chromosomes keep condensing further. So, you can see in the diagram as well that the kinetochores are now bound to the spindle along with the uh, 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 with the spindle and the nuclear envelope has disappeared. There are some continuous spindles which are going from one pole to the other. These spindles are known as the continuous spindles or continuous fibers. The next stage is 
metaphase here all the chromosomes are attached to the opposite poles through the microtubules and the sister uh, the spindle shrinks to pull the chromosomes due to the this pull the sister chromatids are arranged on this metaphasic plate or the equatorial plane which is an imaginary plane where we see the chromosome line the centromeres lie at the equator while the arms are pulled towards the poles the chromosomes are highly condensed the this is known as the best stage for the visualization of chromosomes and formation of karyotypes as all the chromosomes are spread evenly throughout the metaphasic plate and they can be seen easily anaphase is the one that follows metaphase this stage is of the shortest duration here the chromosome breaks at the centromere due to which the sister chromatids separate and become daughter chromosomes the proteinaceous interzonal fibers develop between the sister chromatids and push them away from each other the daughter chromosomes move to the opposite ends of the cell the shape may be v j or rod shape maximum condensation of the chromosome is seen in anaphase one more important thing to see here is that the chromosome spindle fiber shrink while the continuous and interzonal fibers stretch these continuous and interzonal fibers stretch this results in the repulsion of sister chromatids as well as the elongation of the cell now we have reached the last part of the mitosis the telophase and cytokinesis here cell elongation continues further the new nuclear envelopes are formed around the chromosomes on both the poles it can be seen here the nucleolus reforms from nuclear organizing regions the chromosomes unwind into chromatin again so you can see that the chromosomes are not distinct now as they were earlier in the anaphase the estrel and spindle fibers are absorbed into the cytoplasm then the centromeres are reformed by addition of the centrosphere uh, centrosome around the centrioles a cleavage furrow which had started during metaphase deepens and creates divides the cell into two daughter cells thus concluding the process of mitosis and here you can see the bright field microscopy image of root meristem of onion showing cells in prophase metaphase anaphase and cytokinesis of mitosis this is the prophase these two are metaphase this is anaphase and this one is cytokinesis next here are the different stages of mitosis visualized microscopically by staining them with fluorescent antibodies and dyes the first one is prophase fir prometaphase metaphase anaphase and telophase you can see that the spindle fibers are stained green the centromeres are stained pink and the chromosome are stained blue in the beginning or prophase the centromeres and the chromosome part the pink and blue part are lying all around the cell while the spindles are concentrated more on the ends and by the time of c metaphase you can see all the centromeres are lying on the metaphasic plate while the spindles have spread completely during anaphase you can see the spindles are covering up the area while the chromosomes are moving towards the end and in telophase the two separate daughter nuclei are clearly visible so we have seen 
that the mitosis is an elaborate energy consuming process. Then one may ask why do cells undergo division instead of putting all that energy into other cellular processes? What is the significance of mitosis? So, mitosis is one of the most important processes in the living world. It maintains the chromosome number and genetic homogeneity of a species by producing exact identical copies of the cells and maintaining the same number of chromosomes in a species. Mitosis also helps in development and growth like we see embryonic development is mitosis on a very grand scale. It helps in repair of wounds, it heals wounds by replacing the damaged tissue with new cells. Mitosis also helps in regeneration in animals like newts, salamander and lizards which can regenerate lost body parts due to mitosis only. Then again asexual reproduction in animals like yeast occurs due to mitosis only. Mitosis also checks the cell size. It does not let a cell grow beyond a particular size and as the cell grows mitosis is triggered and the cell divides. Speciation Errors in mitosis when sustained vegetatively can lead to speciation. The example being wheat that we eat at our home. Now, like any other cellular process, mitosis is also a controlled process. The various control mechanisms involved in mitosis are nucleocytoplasmic ratio. As the nucleocytoplasmic ratio decreases, the Trigger, it triggers division of the cell. How? Nucleus is the seat of DNA. The cellular process, as the cell grows, it reaches a point where the nucleus is not able to cater to the need of the cell and the nuclear membrane is, has not sufficient area to uh, handle the back and forth of the RNA molecules and the signaling molecules, thus triggering the division of the cell. The second thing that comes into role is the surface volume ratio. The ratio of the surface area to the volume of the cell plays a very important role in cell division. As this ratio decreases, the cell division is triggered. Again, the reason is same. As the surface area of the cell acts as the point of interaction between the cell and its surrounding, the, as the cell grows, the surface area does not grow in the same proportion. So, the surface area becomes less and less as compared to the volume and it starts hindering the cellular processes. Therefore, the cell divides to re-establish the sur surface volume ratio and the successful functioning of the cell. These things are, uh, there are exceptions to these rules in case of starvation or embryonic development the cell does not increase that much in size but still mitosis happens but those are exceptional circumstances. The third reason or third control of mitosis is the cyclic nucleotides or nucleolus. Nucleoluses trigger cell division. The damage to the nucleus, nucleolus between telophase and mid prophase have been shown to arrest cell cycle or arrest mitosis, this means that nucleolus act as triggers for cell division. The next control mechanism is the cyclic nucleotides. It has been found that cyclic nucleotides like CAMP and CGMP are found to increase and decrease very rhythmically throughout the cell cycle and addition or removal of cyclic AMPs and cyclic GMPs can arrest the cell division. The next control mechanism is the phosphorylation. The change in number of phosphate groups attached to H1 histones 
and non histone proteins during interphase also varies rhythmically throughout the uh, different phases of interphase and changing that number can lead to the arrest of cell cycle in interphase due to disruption of RNA transcription which is very essential for formation all of all the molecules that are requ required in cell division. The last but one of the most important mechanism uh, protein is the cyclin proteins. Cyclins along with cyclin dependent kinases are the key proteins in the control of mitosis. They control all the three major checkpoints and ensure the total fidelity of the process of mitosis. Now, let us have a look at the different types of mitosis and where they occur. So, we have studied the general form. Now, we will study the different variations of that general standard mitotic process. The first one is anestral mitosis. In this kind of mitosis, spindle formation is not there. Spindle formation is there, but esters are not present. This kind of uh, mitosis occurs in plants where there are no centrosomes or centrioles to form esters. The second type of mitosis is amphiestral mitosis. Amphi means two. That means the spindles are formed with two esters, one on each pole. Such type of mitosis happens in animal cells in which centrioles are present and they act as the point of initiation of the spindle fiber. Then the next type of mitosis is intranuclear or closed mitosis. This kind of mitosis has spindle formation which happens inside the nuclear envelope, inside the nucleus. As the nuclear envelope remains intact throughout the process and spindle and uh, formation is inside the nuclear envelope. The example is protozoans. Next type of mitosis is the extra nuclear or open type of mitosis which occurs in generally in plants and animals. In this the spindle formation is outside the nucleus as the nuclear envelope is lost during prophase and regained after uh, in the telophase. So during the time of spindle formation the nuclear envelope is lost and spindle is formed outside the nucleus. The next kind of mitosis is endomitosis. In this kind of mitosis, the chromosomes duplicate but fail to separate causing polyploidy in the cells. Polyploidy, this kind of polyploidy can be easily seen in the liver of man where there are both 2N and 4N types of cells. Also, vegetatively propagated many plants which are vegetatively propagated have poly polyploidy due to endomitosis only. The last type of mitosis to be discussed is the free nuclear division. In this kind of mitosis, the nucleus undergoes repeated karyokinesis. The nuclear division is going on and on without any cytokinesis. That means the cell does not divide resulting in a multinucleated cells. These kind of cells are found in some fungi like rhizopus and they form syncytial cells in them. With this, we conclude our discussion of mitosis. But before ending this session, let us just summarize what we have learned so far. So, Today, we studied the process of cell cycle and mitosis. So, what is the cell cycle? The cell cycle is a key phenomenon of cell in which, which leads to multicellularity and reproduction. It has uh, many phases G1, S, G2, mitotic phase and G0 phase, the resting phase. Then we studied about the regulation of cell cycle. We saw that this is a closely guarded mechanism which ensures the fidelity of cell division and results in exact replica of the 
cells. Then we studied the mitosis. The types of cell division which results in two daughter cells which are quantitatively and qualitatively similar to the parent cell. After that, we studied in detail the different stages of mitosis, how the cell once it enters from interphase to mitotic phase, the condensation of the chromosomes begin. We can see that the nuclear envelope starts disintegrating, the centrioles start moving apart and the spindle formation begins. Now moving the next stage to prometaphase, we see that the nuclear envelope starts to disintegrate, chromosomes keep on condensing further and the spindle fibers start the, to attach themselves to the centromeres or kinetochores of the respective sister chromatid of each chromosome. When we move over to metaphase, we see that the uh, chromosomes are lying on the metaphasic plane because of the tension created by the spindle fibers from the both, both the poles. And this stage is best for visualization because the chromosomes are spread in a neat fashion on the metaphasic plate. The next stage is anaphase in which the centromeres of the chromosomes split and now sister chromatids turn into daughter chromosomes and start moving apart towards the different poles and uh, interstitial uh, spindles extend to elongate the cell and push the uh, chromosomes further apart. Finally, in telophase and cytokinesis, we see that the nuclear membrane and nucleolus start to reappear. The centrosomes are formed with the addition of centrosphere to centrioles and the chromosomes start to unwind again and form the chromatin fiber. After that, we studied the significance of mitosis and found that mitosis plays a major role in various biological functions which range from reproduction to repair and regeneration to speciation and control of cell size. Finally, we discussed the control of mitosis and just like the cell cycle, mitosis too is a closely guarded process and there are various situations which trigger a cell to divide mitotically or arrest the cell from dividing. I hope you were able to understand these concepts clearly. I shall be back with another lecture on meiosis which will complete this set of lectures on cell reproduction covering cell cycle, mitosis and meiosis. This is a list of the suggested reading if you want to learn more about these topics. The first uh, earlier options are all the books that I have consulted and the last option the cell cycle animation is an online animation or 3D animation of the cell cycle which I think you should watch will be uh, very good for you to understand how actually things happen in three dimension. Thank you very much and keep learning.